Check out monorail.com, America's affordable investment app made for conservatives who want to keep their hard-earned money with companies that share their value. Download the Monorail app today. Join Monorail. I hope you had a good weekend. Hi, everybody. I'm Dennis Prager. The weekends go fast. The weeks go fast. So make use of it while you can. Hi, everyone. Good to be with you. And my heart goes out to the people in Turkey, the hundreds who were killed. Thousands. It's the thousands? Are you serious? Over, over, over 2,000. Oh, my God. The last number I saw was, I thought, 370-something. Yeah. It's thousands? It's going to be much higher. Look at, you look at the damage. Wow. Yes, it raises, these are the things that raise the questions of what are called theodicy. It's a good word for you to know. T-H-E-O-D-I-C-Y. Theodicy is the problem of unjust suffering and a good God. And my dear friends... I've spent a life trying to find out answers, and they're not all available to us. So, that's that's my comment on, on the theodicy aspect. What I knew, what I know for sure, is that the post Judeo Christian West is dying. That of that I am certain. If that is not obvious to you, it is because you have not thought the issue through. There is no possible alternative but the death of our civilization that has been made by that. I'm reading a book. It's called The Weird People. You're not familiar with it, are you? I have no recollection as to who recommended the book to me. The author's thesis is that in the West, especially Western Europe, which would include the English-speaking world, Canada, United States, New Zealand, Australia, and, of course, the U.K., but that's Northern Europe. It produced weird people. Weird not in a negative sense, but in a different-than-the-rest-of-the-world sense. An interesting example that he gives is if you say to an American, let's say, Fill in the rest of the sentence, I am. It's a very interesting, a very interesting point that he makes. So if I, if I were to fill it in, my aside from saying I'm Dennis Prager, okay, obviously every, anyone would might think their name, but putting your name aside, I am. So you might think to say I am an accountant, uh, I am a, a, an avid uh, sportsman, right? That's what you would fill in. But in the rest of the world, people are more likely to say, I am so-and-so's father. I am so-and-so's daughter. Isn't that interesting? The West built something different here. And we're crushing it. And it was built, according to the author, largely by Protestantism. Right after Luther, the uh, the literacy rates went from one percent to well over fifty percent within within a generation, because people had to read the Bible because of sola scriptura. The doctrine that uh, you get your uh, knowledge of God. For, from the scripture. Sola scriptura means only scripture. We have built something unique in the West and it is hated. It it is hated by the left. How a society that has produced so much good could produce so many people who want to destroy it is a phenomenon. It, It is, we're living through not only a dark age, but a phenomenal one, not phenomenal in the good sense, but in the sense of it is a phenomenon. They, they didn't shoot down the balloon. <laughs> it's, 
the Chinese, I think, think that there is a weak, that the West is going through a weak phase and the United States is the leading country in the West is going through a particularly suicidal phase, and it is, unless you consider what the Democrats doing to be homicide. I don't know if it's homicide or suicide. I think it's homicide. Everything, uh, everything has been hurt by the left. Every single thing. And I think that they sense that they can do anything they want with impunity. Having said that, it's time for me, I guess, to once again return briefly. You're certainly free to, to call in and differ with me, as many of you do. I believe that the aid that this country has given Ukraine, despite my loathing of Joe Biden, one of the worst human beings to occupy any public office in American history, in my opinion, I, I, I think he is as close to conscience-free as we have had. I would say that Donald Trump is a moral giant compared to Joe Biden, but it's irrelevant. I'm talking about the damage done to the country. And nevertheless... Uh, I don't ask, do I like Joe Biden? I ask, what is good for the world and for the United States? And aiding Ukraine may have saved, may, there's no way to know for sure, may have saved us a war with China. Because if China saw that Russia could, with, could simply conquer Ukraine because it wants Ukraine, then it would it would think we can conquer Taiwan because we want Taiwan. They certainly did that with Hong Kong. One of it's probably the only thing that I I differed with Margaret Thatcher, who was one of the great leaders of the twentieth century. When she gave Hong Kong to the Chinese government because of a deal made one hundred years earlier. But it could, I believe, it could have easily been avoided by saying we didn't make the deal with with this government. You are not the legitimate government of China. We don't have to return Hong Kong to you. When you're democratically elected, we'll happily give Hong Kong to you. And so Hong Kong is now part of China. And they want that with Taiwan too. You have to understand... Everyone has to understand that expansionist dictatorial regimes don't stop expanding. Here's one for you. I'll bet you you didn't know this one. One of the Russian, one of the czar's counselors, ministers, a man by the name of Pabi Donostsev, that's a good one, said the following in justifying the expansion of the Russian Empire, that which does not expand contracts. You ever heard that one? Sure. And that, you didn't, right? No, no, you've mentioned it. Oh, I've mentioned story, it. Yeah. yeah, not in a long time. Yeah. Well, you're with me a long time. What, it was brilliant. It was a brilliant insight, and it, it explains the left. It explains uh, uh, Putin, it explains China at this time, that which does not expand contracts. There is no satisfying the people with this attitude. You probably thought that with the redefinition of marriage for the first time in history, to include members of the same sex, one of the most radical, you might say radically wonderful, but it, it, you can't deny it was radical. One of the most radical changes in the history of social relations on earth and the most radical in, in family formation, you, you would have thought, most people thought, okay, that the, the world of LGB, we'll put the T aside for a moment, is satisfied, like the March of Dimes would be satisfied with the conquering of polio. But that is not true. That which does not expand contracts, whether that is Putin's Russia, 
whether it is Xi's China or whether it is the left in the United States. There is always more of territory or more of a society to conquer. One eight Prager seven seven six. We return. The Dennis Prager Show. I'd like to introduce you to Monorail, America's investment app that takes you from where you are to where you want to be. Monorail is an investment and savings app that is made for patriots by patriots. Doesn't matter whether you're an Apple fan or if you prefer Android, Monorail is available in both environments and online at monorail.com. Monorail is safer for users with bank-level encryption and biometrics. Your money is protected with Monorail through Securities Investor Protection Corporation and the FDIC. No matter how you engage with Monorail, you're getting the security and safety that you need. Whether you're adding funds to your investment account, looking to buy a stock, or putting money aside for future purchases. With Monorail, you can put your money where it matters and utilize the economic power that built this country. Don't go somewhere else to trade stocks. Monorail gives you the freedom to purchase whole or fractional shares in companies you believe in. It only takes five minutes to download the app and set up. Join the pro-America money movement. Join Monorail. I'm going to play for you momentarily a hideous video put out by the Disney Corporation. The world would be a better place if Disney shut down. uh, Gentlemen, do we have the Disney uh, video to be played? All right, let's put this up. Can people watch it if they're watching me? Can they see it? Yes, you can watch it while watching me. At SalemNewsChannel.com, you can watch this show in addition to uh, hearing it. So here goes. This is a cartoon. We're not getting any sound, so we'll have to have to start again. Okay, all right. We'll have to play it uh, for you later. We don't have the audio. It it, it is a uh, it's a it's about a minute and a half. They're they're all uh, black figures speaking about uh, how racist America is and that slavery built the country. Black slaves built the country. This is the current, uh, one of the many current lies of the left. There is a, a, I think, an unanswerable objection or proof that that is a lie. Slaves built the country. First of all, slavery was only in the South, and the South was the poorest part of the country. So if slaves built the country... The, how do you explain the fact that the poorest part of the country was the part with slavery? Here's another answer to that lie. Now, you, there's no denying that slaves built the sugar and cotton economies, which are important. But to say built the country is just a lie. If slaves built the country, why isn't Brazil rich? Brazil had, what was it, 10 times as many slaves? I don't don't remember the figure. Way more slaves than the United States. Why isn't isn't Brazil wealthy? Why is Haiti one of the poorest countries in, in Latin America, which is saying something? A, a, a slave state, essentially. It's one of the few black countries of Latin America, maybe the only black country in Latin America. Is there another one that you can think of? I can't. There are blacks in other countries, but but Haiti is essentially all black. Dominican Republic, which shares the island with it, is is European, racially speaking. You have to understand that most college graduates today do believe slaves built the country because the purpose of American education is to graduate ignoramuses. Yes, the purpose. They know almost nothing about history. And if you know nothing about history, you know nothing. Just the way it works. 
They know nothing about history, and they're taught no wisdom. But then they get a B.A. And you know what they get a B.A. in? We all know my phrase in America. Today, you get a B.A. in ingratitude. You get a master's in ingratitude, and you get a Ph.D. in ingratitude. Talking about the colleges, I will be speaking, today is Monday, two nights from now, I will be speaking with Robert Kiyosaki and Charlie Kirk at Arizona State University. 35 professors have written the the university to condemn the university for inviting the three of us, in particular Charlie and me. Robert Kiyosaki is the author of Rich Dad, Poor Dad, I'm not sure exactly what they have against him, so they have generally focused their condemnation on Charlie Kirk and on me. 35 professors. Therefore, if you know anybody in Arizona within hours of Phoenix, it is important to have standing room only response to this, just as when I conducted the Santa Monica Symphony Orchestra We sold out the Disney Concert Hall. They tried the same thing then, professors. Don't go to Dennis Prager, because a conservative should not be allowed to conduct the orchestra of a left-wing city. I raised the entire budget of of that orchestra of that year doing that. Didn't take any money. And they still said people shouldn't go. So are we ready with the Disney? Uh, people where to go to get oh, tickets. oh, that's right. So people can get tickets. Is is there a direct link? Yeah, at DennisPrager dot com. That's right. You can get tickets. That's right. Thank you for reminding me. So I'd like you to uh, hear and watch if you can. This uh, this America loathing, mendacious, fancy word for lying, video put out by the completely nihilistic Walt Disney Corporation. If you go to Disneyland or Disney World, you're supporting a vile organization. If you get it, if you support the Disney Channel, you are supporting a vile organization. It is important to crush the leadership of Disney. They hate this country. They hate truth. I'm not asking you to storm Normandy Beach. I'm asking you to discontinue use of Disney products. It's not exactly a huge sacrifice. There's a lot more you can do with your kids. Here is their vile video. Okay, there's no sound again, guys. Sorry. We'll be back in a moment. 1A Prager 776. It is an extraordinarily... uh, destructive video it, it is as anti-white as anything the Ku Klux Klan ever put out that was anti-black and that is permissible on the left back in a moment COVIDtaxrelief.org got a small retail business almost $80,000. COVIDtaxrelief.org got a manufacturing business nearly $250,000. And COVIDtaxrelief.org just got a large distribution business almost $900,000. If you run a business, church, or nonprofit and paid your employees through all or part of the pandemic, you could qualify for up to $26,000 per employee through the government's CARES Act. But beware of clickbait or pay-up-front companies that make you do the work and take a huge percentage of your refund. COVIDtaxrelief.org receives a low, reasonable commission only after you receive your refund. And with 300 CPAs and tax experts, no one is better at getting you the maximum benefit than COVIDtaxrelief.org. Visit COVIDtaxrelief.org now because this plan expires soon. That's COVIDtaxrelief.org, COVIDtaxrelief.org. Refund examples are not a guarantee and not all businesses qualify. All right, everybody, we're going to show you here a, uh, okay, we're going to show you a video that is put up by Disney, which is a hate-filled video 
presumably for kids. It's, uh, let's see, there are two, five figures, one white, the other's black, and it's, uh, well, you'll hear it, and you can watch it at, uh, at my, at Salem News Channel. Here we go. This country was built on slavery, which means slaves built this country. Tilled this land from sea to sea to sea. First there was rice, tobacco, sugar cane. Then Whitney did his thing and cotton became king. And we were its soldiers. Four, Four million, million strong. Fighting for America's freedoms, even though we remained America's slaves. slaves. Built this country. The descendants of slaves continue to build this. Slaves, slaves built, built this country. country. And we, the descendants of slaves in America, have earned reparations for their suffering. And continue to earn reparations every moment we spend submerged in the system. Okay, hold on, hold on. Okay, so, and continue to earn reparations every moment we spend submerged in a systemic prejudice, racism, and white supremacy. This is the manure, I wish I could use the actual word for manure, that uh, Disney puts out. Disney is an America-hating, white-hating, lying, despicable, child innocence enemy it is not possible to overstate how bad disney has become you are guilty of hurting this country if you go to disneyland or disney world or sign up on the disney channel or have anything to do with this despicable company run by despicable people this whole thing is a blatant white hating lie Slaves built certain industries without question. They did not build the country. Lying doesn't matter to the left because truth is not a left-wing value. I have an example almost every day. This is today's example. But since they learn nothing in school, uh, a whole generation of American kids will believe slaves built this country. And we owe them reparations. Whom do we owe reparations? That's a tougher one. And that the systemic racism with cartoon characters. Wow. To think that they've gone from Peter Pan and, and other stuff. What was it? Fantasy World. Remember that? What, the, what were the different worlds of Disney? I, when I was a kid, it was Fantasy World. Do you remember the different worlds? No. I remember Fantasy World. I can't think of a better example of the left destroys everything it touches than Disney. Because it's so dramatic and so obvious. You should have nothing to do with Disney if you care about truth or if you care about this country. It's as simple as that. America was founded on racism. It is systemically racist today. We owe reparations. This is what is shown here with these characters. Continue, please. And white supremacy that America was founded with and still has not atoned for. Slaves built this country. Hold on. You see, this is the this is perfect propaganda. The slaves built this country line must be said ten times. In, in the, the one minute and I think 18 seconds that I'm that I'm showing you now one minute 45 seconds slaves built this country hmm well slaves built Brazil slaves built Haiti maybe it's not slavery that built countries maybe it's the values of a country that built the country but they couldn't acknowledge that. Continue, please. Hands, but carpenters, masons, blacksmiths, musicians, inventors, built cities from Jamestown to New Orleans to Bannockhead, Washington, 40 acres and a mule. We'll take the 40 acres, keep the mule. We, we made, made your, your families, families rich. From the southern plantation heirs to the northern bankers to the New England ship owners, the founding fathers, former president, current. All right, senators. we'll continue with this when we return. I'm playing for you the latest hate piece from the Despicable Disney Corporation. If you don't say despicable every time you say Disney Corporation, 
uh, you're not uh, doing a service to truth. This video, the black cartoon characters, is, is about how racist America is. This is what's put out for kids when they're not busy denying that they were boys and girls because that's binary. When they're not busy robbing kids of innocence, they're busy giving kids a lying understanding of America. Really bad people have taken over the Disney Corporation. Get rid of their stock. Don't go to their functions. Do not subscribe to their channel. Let them know about this. Write letters to the editor. If you don't fight, you don't deserve America. Okay? Let me put it to you very bluntly. You know that there are people who said to me after the last presidential election, you know, it's, it's the, I, I, don't, uh, I, I don't listen to talk radio anymore. I, I, I'm, I'm just tuning out. I, not because they differ with what's being said. They just don't want to be bothered by the fight. If good people don't fight, they're not good people. Sorry, folks. I really am. I don't want to insult you. I have no interest in insulting you. But I have interest in motivating you to to look inward. Why aren't you fighting? What does it take? I mean, if you're a grandparent, will you take your kid to Disneyland or Disney World? So here's this hate-filled, America is systemically racist, give us reparations, and slaves built the country. Slaves built this country. Slaves built this country. It's already been said about five times. The whole thing is one minute and 45 seconds. We continue. Current senators. The Illuminati, the New World Order. Slaves slaves built this country. We had Tubman. Turner. Frederick D. Then they say Lincoln freed the slaves. But slaves were men. And And women. And only we can free ourselves. Emancipation Emancipation is not freedom. freedom. Jim Crow, segregation, redlining, public schools, feeding private prisons, where we become slaves again. As we celebrate Juneteenth for the the umpteenth time, our account is still outstanding. Because this country was built on slavery, which means slaves slaves built built this country. country. And we demand our 40 acres and a mule. Not that. You can keep the mule. Keep the 40. We're taking our freedom. And then there's a picture of three whites who were horrified by what was done. It's a white-hating, America-hating piece of crap put out by the Disney Corporation. And it's a gigantic lie that the country systemically racist The left is systemically racist against whites and against blacks. There's no contempt for blacks like there is among leftists. There's nothing, there's no comparison of anything on the right. Lower standards, because blacks can't make it, is about as contemptuous a view of a group as you can have. But this fills leftists with meaning. Their empty secular souls need a cause. And this one comes with no price. No price whatsoever. Fighting Christianity, fighting America, fighting whites, you know you're not going to get hurt. So you fill your life with meaning. Anti-racism as the fraud known as Ibram X. Kendi bases his appeal on. Yes. So this this is what they put out for your kids. Want to check out for me how many uh, many black slaves were brought to uh, Brazil? 360,000, I think, is the number to, uh, to the United States. Let's see what the number is to uh, to Brazil. There's a country that was built by slaves. Look at how well it's done. America was built by American values, far more than built by slaves. Certain industries were. There's no doubt about it. It made ind- it made individual Southerners rich, but it didn't build the country. Needless to say, it was horrific. But that's not the same as 
built of the country. But for the average kid graduating the average American high school or college, they wouldn't know what the hell I'm talking about when I, when I would say, well, how many slaves are brought to Brazil? What? What? Brazil had slavery? Where's Brazil? <laughs> Here's an interesting uh, test. While I'm on the subject of Brazil, what percentage of college graduates, college, forget high school, what percentage of college graduates could answer the question, what is the language spoken in Brazil? <laughs> Interesting, but isn't it? I don't think 5% of college graduates, people who went four years to one of our crappy universities, could answer the question. If you don't know the language of Brazil, the largest country in Latin America, you don't know a damn thing. And they don't know a damn thing. They know America's racist and race and racist built the country and that sexual identity is non-binary. That's what you know if you attend American college. By the way, there there are some exceptions. I will be speaking at Arizona State University the uh, the on Wednesday night and uh, some professors actually came out uh, in, against the 35. Three professors. We're going to have one of them on the show defending our right, that is Charlie Kirk, Robert Kiyosaki, and, and I, to speak there. And then I saw a list uh, in that letter of conservatives that Arizona State University has had speak there. It seems to me, and I'll find out more Wednesday night, it seems to me that here is one of the few universities that is intellectually open, Arizona State. I'm sure the great majority of professors look as 35 to 3 in terms of trying to, to condemn the university for having us or defend it. But they're allowing it. My Pillow is excited to bring you their biggest betting sale ever and just in time for Christmas. For a limited time, get the Giza Dream bed sheets for as low as $29.98, a set of pillowcases for only $9.98, and rejuvenate your bed with a My Pillow mattress topper for as low as $99.99. They also have blankets in a variety of sizes, colors, and styles. They even have blankets for your pets. Get duvets, quilts, down comforters, body pillows, bolster pillows, and so much more, all with the biggest discounts of the year happening now. They're also extending their money-back guarantee for Christmas until March 1st, 2023, making them the perfect gifts for your friends, your family, and everyone you know. So go to MyPillow.com and use the promo code Prager, or call 800-761-6302. You'll get huge discounts on all MyPillow bedding products, including the Giza Dream bed sheets for as low as $29.98, and get all your shopping done now while quantities last. Hello, everybody. Welcome to the Dennis Prager Show. I'm Dennis Prager. February 2023. Sounds like a science fiction movie. I welcome you. Last hour, and if you don't get all three hours, you can, at PragerTopia without commercials. PragerTopia.com. I played for you an hour, an hour, a minute and 45 second cartoon put out by the Disney Corporation. If you patronize anything Disney does, you are hurting the United States of America and you are hurting the cause of truth. You have, uh, there is absolutely no uh, justification for purchasing a Disney product at this time. Our task is to get rid of the leadership who have ruined that and are ruining children. They lie, they spread lies. The entire video is blacks built this country, slaves built the country, slaves built the country, slaves built the country. It's a cartoon. It's a white-hating, America-hating, truth-hating cartoon put out by Disney. So I have to repeat again, uh, shame on you if you buy any Disney product. I'm not asking you to storm the beaches of Normandy against Nazi machine guns. I'm asking you to help save truth, liberty, and the country 
by boycotting everything that Disney produces. Their their parks should be empty, or just leftists should be uh, should go there. But since leftists have so many fewer children than conservatives, uh, it's very hard to rely. They're relying on conservatives who are lazy, and it's easier because your kid, oh, take me to Disney World. Why don't you tell your kid Disney World is hurting the United States of America, which I love, and therefore, my dear grandchild, I'm not taking you. Grandpa stands for more than fun. How's that? Grandpa stands for more than fun. That's a radical notion. Boy, it doesn't get more hate-filled and lying than that uh, than that video. Just uh, just for your interest. Interesting conflict uh, is taking place this Wednesday night at Arizona State University. Charlie Kirk, Robert Kiyosaki, author of Rich Dad, Poor Dad, and I, will be on a panel. And 35 professors attacked uh, uh, Charlie and me and condemned the university for inviting us. Three professors have said that we should be invited. One of them will be on the show. When is he coming on? Tomorrow? Yeah. I looked him up, and he's, he's an interesting guy. He's written some very interesting books. Arizona State seems to allow conservatives to speak at their university, one of the rare colleges that does. You should all come on Wednesday night like you did when I when I conducted the Santa Monica Symphony Orchestra about five years ago. It was a huge success. You know that it was the only time, to the best of my knowledge, it was the only time that the Disney Concert Hall ever sold out uh, a regional orchestra. In other words, not the L.A. Philharmonic, for example. And it was because of your support for me. By the way, most people cried that evening. When at the very end, Guido and I, Guido is the late conductor of the Santa Monica Symphony Orchestra who invited me, one of the most wonderful people I've ever met. What was Guido's last name? Let's let's find out, because I, I want to honor him. He suddenly died. He's a perfectly healthy member of the Los Angeles Philharmonic String Section a major violinist as well as the conductor of the symphony, of the orchestra, I should say. It was a painful thing when I, when I learned that he had died. Hmm. Lamel. Guido Lamel, yeah, that's it. All right, uh, let's see here. I eh, might as well take this one. This one is uh, charming, I think. Tempe, Arizona, and Jim, hello. Hi, Dennis. Hey, I, I just appreciate uh, your standing for truth and uh, thank you getting the information out there regarding uh, you know, what's happening in our country and, and also here what's uh, occurring within ASU. I've got two daughters, uh, twin daughters, actually, that attend ASU as juniors. Uh, it was quite a, quite a transition for them, as you can well imagine, going from uh, Christian school to... Uh, the uh, the filth that uh, well the were they university. were they inoculated against the wokeness? Uh, they were. Uh, thank thank the Lord. You know they uh, they walk with God. They're very uh, deeply rooted in their faith. But uh, you know we're all going to be going uh, to see you uh, Wednesday. I just can't believe how many people we got going. This thing is just snowballing. We got to figure out some logistics to get over there to the gamage because uh, boy. That's- you know, we've got we've got like three carloads here going so really far. you're giving it's, me the chills so really you're you're, <laughs> you're touching my heart i i, I well you know we, i just uh, i i wish i, I could that. meet I you and your daughters you. uh thank you god bless you that that's i am the recipient of so much love and so much hate <laughs> it's really by the way i i I know that I've shared this with you, but it is so helpful to to people who hear this. Uh, I'd like to just share it with you how I assimilate the hate and the love. And this is a great guideline for your own life. Don't let compliments go to your head and don't let insults go to your heart. Because if you allow one, you the other one will be allowed. If you let compliments go to your head, you will 
allow insults to go to your heart. So I deeply appreciate the love, but it doesn't go to my head. And uh, I have contempt for the hate, the haters. They're so ignorant about me and everything I stand for and all basically what is good. Uh, But it doesn't go to my heart. I, I sleep perfectly well. And that's the way you should uh, work out life. Don't let compliments go to your head and don't let insults go to your heart. I mentioned something to you only in passing. I had no, no time to develop it. The amount of sickness that permeates the left, I mean sickness, I don't mean just evil, I mean sickness, is quite remarkable. It is a celebration, leftism is a celebration of, of the pathologic. Here is an example, Burberry. Where is Burberry located? Is that English? The company? Yeah, the company. Yeah. So Burberry features transgender model with visible mastectomy scars in Valentine's Day campaign. So Valentine's Day is, is eight days from now. Burberry is the latest, this is from Breitbart, is the latest fashion label to feature transgender models. I saw this picture showing a shirtless female to male model with visible double mastectomy scars in a recent Valentine's Day campaign. So they're celebrating a young woman who had some sick surgeon at some sick children's hospital remove her breasts for no medical reason. Zero. She said that she's a boy. Okay, we'll take your money and we'll remove your breasts. And then Burberry shows the shirtless quote-unquote male with the mastectomy scars. Why is that not sick? They're celebrating it? It's something to be celebrated? The campaign shows the half-naked, tattooed trans model embracing a biological female model who is wearing what appears appears to be a Burberry top. Burberry posted the image to its official Instagram account where it has been inundated by a deluge of negative user comments. The caption below the image reads, B, the letter B, colon, mine, be mine. The same year, Chanel Beauty, that's 2019, announced that transgender model Teddy Quinlivan was the company's new face. It's it's never been a healthy world, the fashion world. It certainly hasn't been for the last 50 years. Yeah, all right, 50 years, fine. Last year, New York Fashion Week featured a 10-year-old transgender model who walked the runway for fashionable label Renacio. Wow, a 10-year-old transgender model. This is the combination of secularism and affluence. That's, that's, this is what is, this has been produced. It's hard to know whether we will survive this onslaught. However, the good news is a lot of us are fighting back. That's why you can't patronize a damn thing that Disney produces. You are hurting the country for sheer convenience. Okay? That's what you're doing when you patronize anything that Disney produces. You better stop the things you do. Talking about toxicity, I have mentioned this, but I have not read to you the uh, the entirety. This is so unbelievable that I have to read it to you. It's from the American Spectator. Norwegian government funds study on whether white paint is racist. <laughs> this is the stuff, what is the line, you can't make it up? So they describe what's happening, and then they write, This brings us to Ingrid Halland, H-A-L-L-A-N-D, an associate professor at the Department of Linguistics, Literary, and Aesthetic Studies at the University of Bergen in Norway. 
What the hell is the Department of Linguistics, Literary, and Aesthetic Studies? Isn't that, isn't that awesome? I'm a professor of aesthetic studies. I, actually, it's beautiful when you think about it. Holland's current area of research concerns the chemical compound titanium dioxide, which mined in Sokendal, Norway, was first transformed by Norwegian scientists of a century ago into a breakthrough product that became internationally popular. Halland's or Halland's modest claim is that this popularity was in large part a reflection of racism. You know, ha- be honest, how often have I said to you, well before this article, that titanium dioxide is racist. I I called it a long time ago. The battle against titanium dioxide, my friends, is the battle against racism. For titanium dioxide is the pigment used in the very best white paint, a pigment that since its introduction has made possible walls and other surfaces that are, quote, whiter than white, which Halland insists is a problem, a big one in her projected academic study, How Norway, how Norway Made the World Whiter. <laughs> this is all Babylon B material. <laughs> News of which has reached English language readers in recent days thanks to a widely reprinted Fox News story Halland's plans to reflect on the question of how our native country by giving the world a substance that is, quote, present in literally every part of modern life has not only led to an aesthetic desire for white surfaces, but has also been inextricably connected with racist attitudes, reinforcing the perhaps largely unconscious acceptance by white people worldwide of the ways in which their own skin color is wrapped up in privilege and systemic exclusion, and thereby in furthering the evils of cultural racism and white supremacy. By the way, just, just well, they, they will note it. There is really not much connection between the color of white paint and, and people that are called white, but we'll put that aside for the moment. In a recent scholarly article, I emphasize the word scholarly, Halland acknowledged that TiO2, that's titanium dioxide, isn't chemically toxic, but added that its introduction into the world of wall paint, quote, created conditions for the emergence of attitudes towards color that could be said to be socially toxic. Modern art and architecture by establishing white as the non-dominant background par excellence, such that certain kinds of buildings, notably museums, could hardly exist without the whitest of white walls. Clearly the ground for cultural racism, ideas about white superiority, and the chromophobic, yes, chromophobic, that's a new phobia. We don't, well, that's right. It's the phobia of the month. Exclusion internalized in architectural aesthetics. Who was it who made the point to me that having white walls at museums, the whole purpose was to be sort of invisible so you could see the paintings better? It's the opposite. Norway's role in establishing white as a background color all over the world concludes Halland was, quote, an imported gesture of coloniality. Incidentally, the bigger, one of the bigger points to be made about all of this, there's so little racism in the Western world today that they invent it. What is coloniality? What is coloniality? Oh, please. What is coloniality? Uh, You know, it's painful that you, my revered producer, would ask, what is coloniality? Coloniality is the act of being colonial. That man is imbued with coloniality. It is a term you frequently use. God, did I see coloniality the other day? Norway placed itself on the side of white colonial powers. That's coloniality. 
Does Holland recognize that precisely the opposite conclusion could just as easily be drawn from this peripheral bit of history? That one could argue, namely, that Norway helped make whiteness invisible. After all, Holland herself points out that when white became the de rigueur color for modernist walls, it, quote, withdrew further into the inconspicuous realm. Furniture and objects were meant to be free from any background. The wall was not meant to be noticed, unquote. Think about it. If you're making a white wall inconspicuous, wouldn't you be rendering whiteness invisible, not privileging it? Uh, but the whole, the whole paper isn't, is not rooted in reason or logic. Then there's the question of what we mean by white. Needless to say, the hue of titanium white paint has nothing on earth to do with the color of anybody's skin. Not even the palest albino is titanium white. The real skin color of so-called Caucasians varies enormously. If you use the term found in Ingrid Sundsberg, widely reposted color thesaurus. I'll continue. We have a great guest coming up. I'll continue with this. There's so little racism in the West that they attack paint. All right, everybody, I'm taking a break from the clear racism implicit in white paint, according to a professor in Norway. And I'm going to return to Earth for a moment. I have in studio, which is a delight, Kent Heckenlively, who has co-authored a brand new book. By the way, James O'Keefe wrote the foreword. This was CNN. It has is crossed out, for those who can't (laughs) see the cover. This was CNN, How Sex, Lies, and Spies Undid the World's Worst News Network. What prompted you to write the book? Well, I've been working with Project Veritas for several years now, writing stories of their whistleblowers. So usually what happens is the whistleblower will, you know, appear on video with James O'Keefe. There's an enormous interest in the story viewed by millions of people. And then afterwards, there's a whole lot of the story that Project Veritas couldn't cover. So that's when they bring me in to go deeper into the story of the whistleblower and deeper into the story. So what whistleblowing is involved with CNN? Uh, So Carrie Porch worked for CNN for two years. Your co-author. Yeah, my co-author worked uh, for CNN for two years. And what was very interesting is that he actually started working for CNN in June of 2017 as a Bernie Sanders supporter. And so what happened was he was a satellite uplink technician, which meant that he had to run the... um, the uh, the satellite truck and get, and get everything set up on location. And the first job, big job that he had to do was the Charlottesville riots. And so he saw the development of the fine people story. And to his credit, and I think this is why I write these books, especially so that they appeal not just to the conservative side of the aisle, but to the liberal, is that he was a fair-minded person. And he said, they're lying about the fine people story, and that started a process. By the way, just, just to remind everybody, the fine people story refers to the allegation that Donald Trump at the time said Nazis were fine people. Exactly. By the way, there's a PragerU video, one of the most widely viewed uh, that we have, uh, about the Charlottesville lie. Uh, it is another another lie because truth is not a left-wing value that he said that Nazis were fine people. I'm sorry, go ahead. Yeah, so that sort of started a process of his eyes being opened and eventually... Oh, that's what did it? Yeah, that's what did it. That's fascinating. Yeah, well, and and, you know, one of the things that I just have to say uh, for people to understand about the Project Veritas whistleblowers is they often don't come from the right side of the aisle. Um, For example... Uh, Zach Voorhees, with whom I wrote the book Google Leaks, was a Google senior engineer, and he'd been a member of the Occupy Wall Street crowd. And, you know, he'd gone to protests and everything. And and then after the 2016 election, after the all-hands meeting, you know, in which they basically cried about the fact that Trump had won, he he started thinking that, man, this this company is not 
serving everybody. Google is supposed to be an organic search engine, and they're curating their results. And what that means is they're giving a certain version of the truth, and it's it's skewed to Silicon Valley values, which are, are very left-wing and, and quite strange to a lot of Americans. Was CNN ever good? Oh, absolutely. And I, I think that... Um, the first chapter of my book is essentially a love letter to Ted Turner um, and his idea that whenever there was a controversy, he wanted to have the smartest person on the left debate the smartest person on the right and then let the public decide. And so um, and, you know, I have to also acknowledge that Ted Turner was a, a deeply troubled man. He He had a terrible upbringing. His father would beat him for the slightest, um, you know, for the slightest, you know, misbehaviors that he did. And it was really remarkable. And even so far as when Ted Turner would disappoint his father a great deal, his father would have Ted beat him as like the ultimate punishment. And so, you know, Ted Oh, Tur- my God. Ted Turner was a... Do you was, know, in a lifetime of hearing six stories, that ranks very high. Yeah. He had the son beat him? Yes, because he said, you've disappointed me That's so much. That's actually worse. It, it, it's, it's absolutely terrible. And so uh, Ted had a lot of problems. Oh, um, oh. And, you know, it's, it's remarkable to me that even with all those problems, he created this yeah, wonderful course. network with these values. And, you know, in 2004... But he, he, wasn't he, forgive me, wasn't he a man of the left? I mean, for example, uh, environmentally, he re, he said he regretted having as many children as he had because they're polluters. Yeah, 100%. All right, we'll come back to that yeah. in a moment. I yeah. want to remind everybody, this is fascinating. This was CNN. Ken Tech and Lively is in studio with me, co-authored it with Carrie Porch, and it is short and powerful. The, the video is very interesting. It is the argument that mockery can be moral. It can be immoral, like virtually every act a human can engage in can be moral or immoral. Killing can be moral, can be immoral, everything. Sex can be moral, sex can be immoral. There is no, I can't think of any virtually, uh, maybe torture is the only one, although Alan Dershowitz has made the point that if somebody has poisoned the water for an entire city and uh, he can, uh, you can stop it by getting the information on how to stop the the poison from leaking into the water. Is a torture even then moral? Anyway, it's a, it's a very powerful video on the subject of mockery. In in studio with me is Kent Heck and Lively, who is co-authored with Carrie Porch. This was CNN. So we were talking about. I asked you, was it ever good? And and uh, you you mentioned that in the early days with Ted Turner, he had a commitment to actually making it a neutral network. Is that yes. correct? What happened? He got kicked out. 2004. By whom? By whom? Uh, the, it was purchased uh, by Warner Media, and he was supposed to be an advisor to them, and he said basically in a 2004 interview with Mike Wallace, they kicked me out. It was the worst thing I ever did. I have absolutely no influence over CNN. Who owned it before Warner? I believe it was it was Ted Turner's organization. Oh, so he they agreed to sell it to Warner? Yep. Oh, that's what he said when he said it was a big mistake. The worst mistake of his life, he said. Who owns it now? Uh, well, it's Warner Media, and now it's been purchased by Discovery. Um, uh, John Malone and Chris Licht are running the network. And what's really interesting is when I started writing the book, Jeffrey Zucker was in charge of the organization, and we never imagined he would get fired, uh, but he did. And John Malone and Chris Licht are actually on record as saying they're trying to move CNN back to the center. 
but they're having a lot of problems with their hosts who don't and news people who don't want that to be done. And it remains to be seen whether that's going to happen. CNN's ratings are in, are in free fall because, as I say, you know, once you lie to people and you admit that you lie to them, then you know, it's really difficult for them to trust you again. MSNBC has higher ratings. <laughs> I'm not kidding. Yeah. That was the last thing I read. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's just in, in absolute free fall. So I think the book is probably well-timed. Um, and strangely, I feel like the criticisms, I, I'm actually kind of considering whether I should send a copy of the book to John Malone and Chris Licht and say, you know, Look, I'm I'm a critic of CNN, but I'm not an enemy of CNN. I would like to see, you know, a really good objective news station and see if they would have me on at CNN talking about the book. I think that would would show that they're actually were so, committed. I'm just curious because I used to be on his show with some degree of regularity, Don Lemon. Oh, uh, and uh, that that ended uh, <laughs> obviously. Do you are you following his career? Has that been a a a downward move for his career to be on this morning show? I, I believe it's definitely a downward move. I, I think they're moving him out the way they they've been moving out a lot of other people. And the question is is whether they can save the ship. Uh, I, I think it's it's an open question. And if you ask me to bet, I'd say sixty forty that I don't think they're going to be able to save the network. You have any analysis of Wolf Blitzer? You know, from what Kerry had told me, Wolf Blitzer always seemed to be a really good guy. He, he interacted with all of them. Uh, he he had nothing but words of praise for Wolf Blitzer. So re- can you read his mind? Was he okay with the leftward lurch of CNN? Um, I, I don't think I'm capable of right okay mind. i've always wondered yeah. about that i knew him from the very beginning so let's go to the subtitle is how sex lies and spies undid the world's worst news network so you choose sex lies or spies i want to go to spies spies for 20 dennis right um so uh what was really interesting is in my two previous books with project veritas whistleblowers i was really looking deeply at the whistleblowers themselves, because I think that oftentimes in this area, you know, we get focused on the negative things and it seems overwhelming. And and I've just found these whistleblowers to be some of the most courageous people I could ever hope to meet. And I, I really want to to honor their stories. And the publisher had said, you know, we need to go a little bit deeper than their stories. So what I did was I ended up hiring one of the world's best group of researchers and said, can you do a deep dive into CNN? I have a number of questions. And one of the things that they came back to me, which was not what I was expecting, was that we identified 21 individuals at CNN who have significant intelligence backgrounds. And the question is, how is it that a journalist can have an intelligence background. Now, let, let's talk about some of these examples. And, and also the question, and it's an open question because I think you can have many different, you know, suspicions. And, and I try to be really clear in saying, here's the evidence and here are my suspicions. Here's what I think, but here's what I can prove. So let's talk about Jim Secuto. Jim Secuto is their national security correspondent. So he's the person that we expect to tell us, you know, what other countries are doing and what our country is doing, right? So from December 2011 to May 2013, he was the chief of staff and special advisor to Gary Locke at our embassy in Beijing, China. And what my researchers have said to me is, my God, how can this person who's a national security advisor also have been the chief of staff at the U.S. Embassy in Beijing, China? Because what that means is he had to sign security oaths saying, I can't reveal this information. So are you well, telling me? All right. Yes, I want to hear. Obviously, we'll be back. I got to promote your book because <laughs> it's a book of an important book. This was CNN, Kent Heck and Lively. We're back in a moment. Welcome to the Dennis Prager Show, everybody. Hour three of the show today. Hope you had a good weekend. 
Did you know that the Chinese balloon, according to what I read, was the size of two buses? People think balloon, they think of this little thing. <laughs> two buses is pretty big. I don't have an answer because, unfortunately, I trust nothing that comes out of this particular administration. And for those of you who will counter, well, nobody lied as much as Donald Trump. If you actually care about truth, you will know that that itself is a lie, that all he told were lies. I know the uh, Washington Post had a list of 2,000 lies he told. 2,000? I thought it was more than that. thought it was more than that. Maybe it was 2,500. Uh, 2,500, yeah. Anyway, I, I went through some of it. it it's, it's somewhat preposterous. Uh, when it came to uh, helping America, he was pretty honest, actually. Uh, in any event, I don't, I don't trust the, the answer. They were afraid to shoot it down, uh, lest it hurt the civilians on the ground. Thirty thousand five hundred seventy two. Oh, I was I was way off. Thirty thousand five hundred seventy two. Three. <laughs> five hundred seventy three. Yeah, well, that 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 the, the last one was uh, was really uh, tangential. Thirty thousand lies. Yeah. Well, it sounds very effective. Somebody should document how many lies the Washington Post, New York Times have told. Because they're much. Uh, they, they dwarf all 30,000 alleged lies. I read to you last week about the report. I, I still find it amazing that came out of the Columbia School of Journalism, the Columbia Journalism Review, about how much the New York Times and Washington Post lied, and they got the Pulitzer Prize for lying with regard uh, to the Russian collusion story. To the best of my knowledge, the New York Times has not covered the Columbia Journalism Review article, and the Washington Post has announced how proud it is of its coverage. Talking about the Pulitzer Prize, by the way, I saw a movie this weekend called Mr. Jones. Did you see it? Oh, yeah. It's very powerful. Yeah. You should all see the movie Mr. Jones. Aside from being a superb movie in and of itself, it is a true story about a man who told the truth about the Soviet starvation of Ukrainians in what is called the Hole of the Moor, the Ukrainian equivalent of, to the Holocaust. And it, it was, it, it was with, without being over the top, it, it was truth-telling about families that ate their children, for example. I know all about this stuff. This was my field of study. And the Pulitzer Prize was given to Walter Durante, who was a completely corrupt New York Times reporter in Moscow who had orgies in his Stalin-supplied apartment while lying about the Soviet Union. He lied about the Soviet Union. His motto, as was Lenin's, was, in order to make omelets, you have to break eggs. Of course, they never made an omelet. (laughs) They broke a lot of eggs under communism, but they didn't make an omelet. So there was actually a reporter who went to Ukraine... And he found the truth, reported it. Walter Durante called him a liar in the New York Times. And they have never rescinded the Pulitzer Prize for him. They won't rescind the Pulitzer Prize for the New York Times again about lying about what they call Russiagate. The New York Times is not committed to truth. It's committed to an agenda. And and that's it. Just so you you need to know that. I get the New York Times because it's important to read what the left thinks. Just as I used to read Pravda regularly, which is the only reason I learned Russian. I wanted to read Pravda, the Soviet communist newspaper. I have a very strange knowledge of Russian. 
I could say the Soviet Union condemns the Israeli aggression against the peace-loving people of the Arab world, but I can't say I would like a tuna sandwich. <laughs> I speak Pravda Russian. <laughs> How are you? I condemn your aggression. <laughs> oh, well, you got you to gotta learn what you got to learn. I want to say a word about the, uh, was it, what was uh, again, Gareth Jones was what was that his first name the, the reporter who told the truth and then who was murdered by the Soviets in Mongolia before his thirtieth birthday. I am I am increasingly convinced of something about the human race. Every generation produces a tiny percentage of people who love truth and goodness and who have the courage to fight for it, a very small percentage of humanity. I think it produces more evil people. The bell curve is not really symmetrical. I think it produces more people like those in the Mexican cartels, people who thrive on butchery of human beings, than it does produce Gareth Jones's. But it does seem to do that. Every generation does seem to do that with a tiny number of people. I'm glad that Gareth Jones' story, which I, I had vaguely recalled and, and then realized it was a true story, the film. There is a Jewish legend that in every generation there are 36 righteous people and that if the number ever fell to 35, the world would implode. And it's a, it's a profound legend. I, and I, I increasingly understand the truth of it. There is a small percentage of people with the courage to fight evil. And this, this man, out of nowhere, he, he just did it. It depicts a scene in Ukraine when he was there where he ate tree bark, which is true. Tree bark is a staple in North Korea, for example. I debated a, a rabbi last year in, uh, in Los Angeles. It's on YouTube. You should watch it. He, he had written an article that human nature is basically good among the single stupidest beliefs a human being can have. I find it indefensible for an adult to believe such a thing. It means the adult wants to remain a child. He was a very nice guy. But So this is not an attack on him, although it obviously is not praise, but my point is not to attack him, it's to attack anybody who, as an adult, believes people are basically good. It is widespread among Americans because Americans have it so good that they think that that is the norm in the human race. So another reason people need to know about Auschwitz and Gulag and the Holodomor and the Great Leap Forward in China. It's only killed about 60 million people. And I always remind people, when you hear that figure, you must multiply it by about five at least, probably ten, maybe more, to understand the horror for every person starved to death by Mao or Stalin, there are, the, there are the rest of his family, there's the extended family, and there are all his friends or her friends. The, the ripple effect of these monstrous crimes then reaches to, to a billion. And you think people are basically good? Well, anyway, you should see it. It's called Mr. Jones. It's not an ad. And if they did advertise, I'd be more than happy to plug it regularly. But you should see it. People need to know about evil. They think America's evil. Systemically racist America. Why do so many black Africans want to move to the United States if it's so racist? Have an answer to that one? 
Of course, they don't have an answer to that one. The left has no answer to that one. The beauty about being on the left is nobody asks it. <laughs> That's why they don't want conservatives on campuses. But we will be at Arizona State University, Charlie Kirk and I, and Robert Kiyosaki. The, you can get tickets at the at the DennisPrager.com this Wednesday night. Well, all right, everybody. So, if we could sell out the place at Arizona State, that will be a real statement. So, if you're in Arizona, I already got a call last hour. I was thinking carloads of people to, uh, to Tempe. I salute Arizona State for inviting us. I salute Arizona State for uh, inviting a number of conservatives to speak. Apparently, according to three professors who defend our right to come against 35 professors who condemn the university, they've had a, a fair number of conservative speakers at ASU. Isn't it amazing that you have to praise the university for having conservative speakers come in? But that is the case. I, I was reading to you last hour. I have to finish it because it you you get I'll tell you why it's so important. This Norway story that uh, this uh, professor at this university has declared that white paint which was developed apparently in Norway with titanium dioxide is racist. So the author in the American Spectator writes Then there's the question of what we mean by white. Needless to say, the hue of titanium white paint has nothing on earth to do with the color of anybody's skin. Not even the palest albino is titanium white. The real skin color of so-called Caucasians varies enormously. If you use the term found in Ingrid Sundberg's widely reposted color thesaurus, you'll find that white people can qualify as, among others, cream, ivory, eggshell, tan, Sand, latte, honey, apricot, sandstone, rose, or salmon. I must say I am closer to salmon than to white. I I now have an answer because I'm on the pink. I'm of the pink race. Next time I have to fill in race, I'm putting in salmon. That's a good one. Alan, what are you? You look uh, you look more like uh, sandstone. sandstone. Yeah, sandstone. I would say that you abs- my God, you're chiseled. You're a living sculpture. Well, hey, what, what was Adam Carolla's comment? The Easter Island. The Easter Island. <laughs> exactly. Oh, is this, it's sick. The same goes for blacks. Even the very blackest people aren't really black, but mahogany or mocha or chocolate. Unlike Alan, the- his producer, the guy who runs the whole thing, who's uh, somewhere between my mom and an Easter Island head in terms of <laughs> gregariousness and encouragement. <laughs> Listen, Alan, when all is said and done, very few people have been described by Adam Carolla. That's an honor. I take it as soon. You do take it. Okay, good. Unlike the U.S. and other New World countries, Norway never was a market for African slaves. So what? Right? It's still, it's still racist because it's white. Similarly, unlike many of its fellow European nations, Norway never had an intercontinental empire. So what? Do you understand? This teacher would be, this professor would have nothing to do if she didn't make up racism in Norway. She would have no, no, no purpose in life. Thus, we have the absurd spectacle of a professor in Norway who pretends that Norway somehow shares in the supposedly immense and indelible Western responsibility for the depredations of imperialism. Halland, the the professor, puts it this way, although Norway is not a conventional colonial power, it has played a globally leading role in establishing white as a superior color. (laughs) Okay. Anyway, I will leave that for now. Next time you see white paint, 
please be aware that titanium dioxide is the mother of racism. Why do I bring this to your attention? One, to show you how toxic American ideas have gone around the world. But even a bigger one is there's so little racism that they have to make it up. That's the key for you to understand. Why are there so many race hoaxes? Why do I have reason to assume that if there is anti-black graffiti spray-painted on a black kid's dorm door, that the odds are that either a leftist student or a black student has done the graffiti and not a white racist? Talking about that, did you know, where, where did this take place where this doctor was uh, hit by a car and then stabbed to death. Where did that take place? Oh, uh, down here in Southern California. It's happened this past weekend. And it was a uh, a black man who uh, hit him with the car, then got out of the car and stabbed him to death. So I'm curious, if a white man had done this to a black man, hit him with his car, and then gone over and stabbed him to death... Do you think you would know about it? That, my dear friends, is what is known as a rhetorical question. That is all you would know about. It would make more headlines or equal headlines to the Chinese balloon. But you don't know about it, or the odds are you don't know about it, because it goes in the other direction. And that's the way the news is reported. President Trump was correct, the fake news. And that that drove them crazy, but that's exactly what you get, fake news. To give you an idea of how widespread the toxicity is, here's Omaha, Nebraska. That's the middle of the middle of the heartland. That's the heart of the heartland, right? An Omaha, Nebraska university ordered a student organization to remove political posters depicting guns and slogans that some found offensive. The College Fix reported that Creighton University has a ban on pro-Second Amendment posters. Members of the Young America, anyway, you can't show a gun on a, on a poster discussing gun, uh, gun control from a conservative standpoint. Well, the good news is we're fighting back. I will describe some of the fight with regard to Disney when we come back. I played for you an unbelievably anti-white, anti-American, and anti-truth video just put out by Disney. Hi everybody, Dennis Prager here. It's very fitting that I'm having Bill Donahue on, Donahue on because he's the president of the Catholic League involved in making this documentary. Walt's Disenchanted Kingdom, because I played for you in its entirety the nearly two-minute video that Disney has just put out now, uh, which is one gigantic lie and hate-filled video against whites and against America. Uh, If you patronize anything that Disney does, Disney World, Disneyland, Disney Channel, Disney products, uh, then uh, you have contributed to the hurting of America in a substantial way. So I congratulate you, my friend Bill. Bill and I go back, I I believe it's the Civil War, is that correct? (laughs) I was just telling uh, your (laughs) assistant there, I said, I think it goes back to the 1980s when I was a professor in Pittsburgh. We we hooked up then. This country uh, was built on slavery. I I just love your courage and your brilliance. Keep it up. Well, uh, coming from you, it's a big compliment. I thank you very much. So tell us about uh, the Walt's Disenchanted uh, Kingdom. Yes, I mean, like most people, I grew up loving Disney. I was even asked uh, by a nun in the seventh grade, who was your most famous person? Uh, uh, And I said, uh, the person I love the most is Walt Disney, for all the obvious reasons, making people happy. And to to see it change like it has, I I did notice some changes when they acquired uh, Miramax and making anti-Catholic movies as a distributor for uh, ABC and and Disney owned them, but it's only been in the last so many years that it's just completely gone, like the, the top echelons of the, of the military and the, the Forbes 500 healthcare industry. Uh, 
I'm not talking about the rank and file. I'm talking about the elites, the ruling class. They've now bought into this woke culture. But what really tipped the scales for me is when you start going after the kids. I mean, that's that's got to be off limits. And, and I commend people like Andrew Sullivan and others who say, listen, uh, this thing has gone too far like that. And we need more voices like that from the gay community and, and others. But when you start targeting kids at the age of five, saying that, you know, kindergarten through third, that's, that's five through eight, I taught those little kids at one time in Spanish Harlem. And I can tell you, when you start telling them, listen, uh, are you really happy being a boy or a girl? Maybe you should question that. And we know where that kind of leads. And then to, to, to sub, submarine the, the, the parental rights, which is what led, led to DeSantis, the governor of Florida, to fight back. I said, this has gone too far. I asked Tony Perkins, the great evangelical leader, I said, would, would you be willing to meet with uh, me, to meet with Bob Chapek at that time as the, uh, the CEO of Disney? And he said, absolutely. So we wrote to him and we said, listen, all we'd want to do is provide our side uh, as Christian leaders and, of course, we got no response. At that point, I said to Tony, I said, I can't take this any longer. We've got to do something. And that's why we decided to do the documentary. So who, who's running Disney now? Who's making these decisions? Well, some people would say you've got the radical element within as employees within Disney. And that is true. Uh, but they're a minority, quite frankly. We, we highlight the number of gays, for example, who, who work there and who don't want anything to, to, do, to do with this. Uh, that's part of it. The the president of D- Disney is a woman who's got uh, some trans kids and the like, and I think sometimes the personal becomes political. Then you've got the, 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 the push from BlackRock and others with this whole idea of equity and uh, diversity. Wait, what does BlackRock have to do with this? Well, because they're, they're shareholders, and, uh, and these people listen to them. And so that's just it. I mean, there's a financial uh, element. There's an ideological element. And, of course, it's considered to be very chic. I mean, just look at the Grammys and what happened with last night and so, so the way these people act. Uh, it's considered to be chic, to be tolerant of people who are profoundly intolerant of others in our society. But those others tend to be observant Jews, evangelical Protestants, Muslims, Mormons, traditional Catholics, people of faith who hold to traditional moral values. So we're not entitled to respect, or we're not included. They keep talking about inclusion. Why didn't they include Tony Perkins and Bill Donahue then to meet with Bob Chapek? Why do we get excluded in the name of inclusion? So, so again, by name, who who is this woman now? Who who, and what is her position at Disney? She's the president. I forget her name. Okay, I, fine. So head. the president and and Chapek is CEO. No, he, JPEG has left. Bob Iger, who was the previous uh, uh, CEO for a long time, and who worked, quite frankly, it's not my opinion, uh, it, it's well out there, he worked to basically uh, subvert the, the best interest of Bob JPEG. He wanted the job back, and he got it back. Uh, I, don't, I don't trust either one of them. Uh, but there's more than just a few there. Obviously, the, as you mentioned in the lead-up to this, uh, now you know the, the whole thing with the um, 1619 uh, mentality, critical race theory, it's, it's all conjoined. I mean, the left is consumed, as you know, with two things, race and sex. Yeah, hold it there, the hold it there. Extreme... I, I want to continue one moment. Uh, uh, Bill Donahue, the head of the Catholic League, and uh, one of those who's made this... Uh, you can see it at SalemLive.com, uh, and it's free. Walt Disney's Walt's Disenchanted Kingdom. Dennis Prager here. Thanks for listening to the Daily Dennis Prager Podcast. To hear the entire three hours of my radio show, commercial-free, every single day, become a member of PragerTopia. You'll also get access to 15 years' worth of archives, as well as the daily show prep. Subscribe at PragerTopia.com.